I'm Abhay Vigil and I'm one of the co-founders at Dhruva Space. And thank you all for inviting me today to be part of this event. I'd like to start off with a quick question. What is the first thing that comes to each of your mind when I ask you to think of a satellite that's orbiting the Earth today? An SUV maybe? Probably a small room. Let me show you what a typical modern day small satellite looks like. So the object I'm holding in my hands is not even the smallest satellite that has been launched into space in the past decade. While some of the applications still demand a large satellite to accommodate the payload, these small satellites are soon proving to be a replacement to the large ones for many applications. So how did this shift happen and what are the implications of the same? Let us go down the history of the space systems how did they start and evolve into what they are today? In the past, until the 1990s, the satellites and their subsystems were built in an approach that required huge development cost, long development times, which often ranged from 24 months all the way up to 36 months, and also heavy capital infrastructure. This meant that the access to space was restricted only to a handful of the wealthy and the technologically advanced nations. However, one positive of this was that the lifetime of these satellites was also typically around 10 to 15 years. From the 1990s and the 2000s, there was a fundamental shift that took place in how these satellites were built. This was primarily driven by two major factors. Number one, the use of COTS components. COTS is nothing but commercially off the shelf. So the shift from using only space grade electronics meant that the qualification times, the lead times and the cost of these components all came down. Number two, majority of these satellites were launched and continue to be launched into what is called as a low earth orbit. Now this is at an altitude of around 400 kilometers to 1200 kilometers above the earth. This in comparison to the geostationary orbit which is at 36,000 kilometers height is where the major difference happens. The radiation levels that these satellites experience are significantly lower. But the trade-off is that the lifetime of these satellites due to the physical nature of the gravity itself is that the lifetime typically varies from one year to three years. One interesting characteristic of the low earth orbit is that the satellites are not stationary with respect to the earth. For example, if a satellite in the low earth orbit takes an image of let's say the MBSR campus today, it takes about 21 days for it to come back and take the same picture. This means that for any commercially viable solution to be possible using satellites in this orbit, we need to put multiple of these to form what is called as a constellation. Now, now it is estimated that over 20,000 small satellites are planned to be launched in the coming decade. And this is a conservative estimate. So how does an industry which is typically used to build and launch about 20 large satellites in a year, shift the momentum completely to build about two to three satellites in a day. Now this calls for a fundamental change in how these satellites are built, launched and operated. And as mentioned earlier, one of the significant factors that helps in accelerating this production is the use of commercial and consumer technologies in the spacecraft. Now, there is one very interesting observation here to be made. So many of you must be aware of the laser surgery that is used to correct eyesight. Now, this procedure commonly uses technology that was originally developed for astronauts in the International Space Station to get themselves acclimatized to zero gravity environments. And now this is used to track the patient's eye and precisely direct the laser scalpel. One another interesting example here is similarly the use of Velcro. So this was the use of Velcro in fact 
uh, by NASA in space applications led to the popularity of it in all circles of life. What this demonstrates is that in the 60s, a lot of technology built for space found applications on Earth in regular walks of life. And now, there is a reverse migration of technology of sorts, where a lot of technology that is built for the consumers on Earth is in fact being used in space. For example, the processor that was used on the NASA Mars mission on their Ingenuity helicopter is a Qualcomm Snapdragon, which was in fact developed for other mobile phones. So smart approach of qualifying the satellite at a subsystems level instead of the individual components level, in fact ensures the reliability of the overall satellite is not compromised. At Truva Space, we built application agnostic small satellite platforms and aspire to cater to the growing global market of small satellites for various applications. And now, as an entrepreneur in the space industry, I think the theme for today's event, Perseverance, is something I can relate to, to the point where it has just become a habit. For us space engineers, the word Perseverance also holds a special place, in fact, as the name of the Mars rover mission that was launched by NASA in 2020 is Perseverance. Two instances I'd like to narrate today that demonstrates what a typical day for us looks like. So the first example that comes to my mind is our high altitude ballooning experiments. So to test our subsystems, we launch high altitude balloons with our systems connected to them. And we do this to test and validate their performance. These are untethered balloons that can travel a distance of over 100 kilometers and an altitude of about 32 kilometers from the launch site. And our team has recently performed three successful launches and have recovered the payload. And they have done this using a combination of stationary ground stations spread across different parts of the city and GSM mobile networks, mobile ground stations that are mounted on vehicles, etc. And this is an interesting exercise in fact, which sometimes involves trekking, off-roading, wading through the waters and talking to the villagers, negotiating with them to see if they have, you know, seen a payload dropping or on with a parachute on nearby. And sometimes it in fact involves huge amounts of swinging of hopes, whether, you know, we found it, we didn't find it, something looks a bit orange, but it turns out it's actually not the payload, etc. But ultimately, when we do find the payload, that is what, you know, gives us the ultimate joy. In one case, we launched a balloon in Bangalore and would you believe it, it was recovered off the coast of UDP near Mangalore. I'll quickly show you how the payload looks like. So what you see over here is uh, about 2 kilograms of payload that includes our subsystems and you see on the bottom few elements of our antenna that are in deployed position that keep transmitting the data and it also has few trackers like GSM tracker etc which transmit the position in real time and in fact this particular system also had a camera installed on it where we could actually see the earth from about 30 kilometers height. So another example some of the systems that we build are complex electromechanical systems that are designed to withstand the heavy launch loads that the system experiences during the launch of the rocket. One of the mechanisms that we have designed worked beautifully well at the time of integration, but it was failing every time we do a post vibration test. And it took us about 10 iterations and more than 12 months to fix this issue which was a mix of material research, process, machining and post-machining efforts that solve this particular problem. And working on challenges like these is what excites us as we work towards putting our systems in space in the near future. The opening up of the space sector globally, allowing private players 
to participate in a fashion that was never so accessible shall pave the way for many applications on the ground be it weather monitoring navigation communications earth observation and strategic purposes we persevere to in our endeavor to build space systems for the world thank you